When I was very young, we couldn't go on a holiday in the mountains or to the sea, so we used to go in the vineyards. I learned from my father how to distinguish a Chardonnay from a Pinot Noir and that sort of interesting lesson. How did we distinguish Côte de Beaune from Côte de Nuit? And even more important, when it came to Romani Conti wines, in which way were these wines great wines? It was interesting for me as a young girl to see how the wines were appreciated, the way they were described by my father. And this is where the stress was really on the finesse, on the complexity. We didn't hear about the acidity, the pH, alcoholic content, but we certainly learned the fundamentals and we certainly learned to distinguish a good, pleasant wine from a great wine. We are fortunate to live in Bonn. It's an old city, very old indeed. The scenery out in the vineyard is just extraordinary. Started in 1880, my grandfather, as many people in those days, he used to sell Burgundy wines. Then my father, Boris Drouin, 1980, took over the business, and thanks to him, really, the company was oriented. The goal was to produce only the high-end wine. I always refer to Maurice Drouin as my father. In fact, he's my uncle. My parents died when I was young, and I was adopted by my uncle, Maurice Drouin. Around 1928, my father had an agreement with the owners of Romandie Conti to be their sole distributor for France and Belgium, which explains why we still have in our cellar so many of these pre-war wines. You may wonder what happened during the war. Were not the Germans interested in these wines? In fact, in 1939, 1940, when the Germans invaded France and Burgundy, my father thought there was a high risk of all these wines disappearing. He decided to block one part of the cellar. He built a wall with bricks, put on mud, dust, some said we put cobwebs, so it was not discovered, and all these wines were kept safely. So it was a good decision. In 1940, in October, he was imprisoned by the Germans. He spent a few months in prison, and he gave instructions in writing to my mother what to do about the business. He said, cut down the allocation by one third because we don't want the wines to be sold too, too quickly in these difficult times, and saying it's time to bottle the wines of the Romani County. In the 60s, Many things were changing in Burgundy. My father, unfortunately, had a stroke, and at the age of 24, I had to step in and be in charge of the, of the company. Around 1964-65, I decided that my private wines, I would move to a more private place. So for the last 50 years now, the wines have been kept in an air-conditioned cellar. It's one of the reasons why the wines have kept well. There are still a few bottles of 1937 in the world, but possibly no other magnum of 1937 in imperfect conditions as they are here. We wonder why some of the bottles we have, the label has been partly handwritten. The wines we received from the domain were unlabeled. We had the labels separately. However, very often it appeared near the end of the lot that we were left with no label. There had been lost some negligence, oversight. So all these bottles were then delivered to our private cellar 
for our own consumption. We knew of the origin of wine because we were sure of the vintage and we did not mind if the, 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 the vintage was uh, corrected on the label. Why did I decide to sell these wines? Well, I'm not young anymore. I thought I cannot possibly drink everything, although I have good friends and we are privileged when we need to open one of these great wines. But still, I thought, uh, what would we cannot keep them for years and years, so uh, why not sell them? I think I'm very happy, very fortunate to drink these scarce wine. Scarcity adds somewhat to the pleasure of wine. And so I suppose that's why there is so much interest for these wines.